Hello, I'm Kat, this is 10 minutes long, and I didn't get very much sleep last night, uh, and that's kind of spurred me on to do this video of the top 10 things that keep me awake at 3am. Um, maybe they're the same things that keep you awake, but I have no success in stopping waking up to these things at all. So in 10th place, snoring, definitely snoring. My husband's pretty good actually, that's why he's in 10th place, like he does snore but not tons. But every now and again I'll wake up at like 2am and he'll be snoring and I'm like, alright well, that's me not going back to sleep for a little while. So that is number 10, for a good reason. Number 9, getting annoyed at myself for dreaming about spreadsheets. So in my job um, there's a certain amount of spreadsheets and admin and stuff involved which is pretty normal for most jobs um, but there are times when I have a dream about spreadsheets and it just drives me nutty. Um, you know I wake up because I've been trying to delete some cells or because I've been trying to add rows or columns or like and just something just it annoys me that I would dream of something quite so tedious. So that is number nine. That is like, if I if I wake up having dreamt about spreadsheets, I will lie there annoyed for a little while and that'll stop me going back to sleep, which is a really, now I say it out loud, strange thing to be kept awake by. Um, the exact process of something is number eight. So like if, if I know that tomorrow I've got to cook something or like do something complicated, I will lie there and think about the exact steps that I'm going to follow the next day. So like right before I painted um, the toilet in my house, there's a lot of woodwork in the toilet and there was a lot of stuff that needed masking. So like it needed masking all around the window, all around the doors, all around the skirting, like it was a big job. Uh, and I lay there awake just thinking about all of the things that I would have to mask um, and the exact process of that. And I've done the same with like cooking and things. So. The exact steps that I'm going to have to follow to do a thing is something that will 100% keep me awake. Um, what number are we on now? Seven. Seven. Number seven is rehearsing things. So if I have a meeting the next day or like something that I've been nervous about, um, which is usually a meeting, it's usually unnecessary. Um, but if it's like a meeting or I'm, I'm speaking to someone and they need to speak about something complicated or something nerve wracking, I will just lie there and just rehearse what I have to say. And sometimes I'll lie there and rehearse conversations that I never ever have. Like if I'm annoyed at someone for doing something or, you know, if I, if I want to have a difficult conversation that I don't then get around to, I will just lie there and rehearse it to death and then just never ever deliver on what I've rehearsed but that can keep me awake for a good long while um just going over and over conversations that I never have uh number six songs that get stuck in my head there are way way too many of these like I, I enjoy music I like music a lot but there are certain songs that just get well and truly lodged in my head and then I will wake up with them already playing in my head and then I can't get rid of them to go back to sleep. So um, examples of this would be Girls in Bikinis by Poppy, which has been the latest one that's just been all lodged in there. Um, Baby Shark, I nearly lost my mind over because that was in there for weeks and weeks and weeks and it just drove me absolutely nuts. Um, Gay Bar by Electric Six. Uh, Pink by Aerosmith, like these are just songs that have just at some point or another just been totally lodged in my head. Um, but yeah, I'll wake up in the night and I'll be singing it and I'll be just, it'll just be lodged in my head until it goes away. Sometimes I find listening to it again in full will make it go away, but not always. Um, five, an interesting chapter of Bill Bryson. So. Uh, when I can't sleep, I put on a pair of like sleep headphones. I call them my sleepy ears. Um, and it's just like a very soft headband with, with built-in headphones, I suppose. And I lie on it and it's just it's, it's, comf it's comfortable enough to go to sleep. And I put on an audiobook. 
it used to be that I would listen to Michael Megas by Voltaire, which is a story that I absolutely love, even though it's really existentially strange. And, um, you know, when you actually listen to the whole story, you realise that it's, it's really a damning indictment of humanity. Um, but I used to listen to that because it was read by someone called Prentice Oyami and it was just his voice is just like perfect. Uh, but it is only an hour long, so um, I would find that sometimes I would wake up at the end of it and then not be able to get back to sleep again. So now I listen to um, At Home by Bill Bryson. Um, it's a really, really interesting book, actually, and um, I've, really en I've really enjoyed it. But I also, he's, he's easy enough to listen to while you go to sleep, you know, like, I've, I've tried actually listening to David Attenborough, but he's just way too interesting to listen to when I go to sleep. Um, and Bill Bryson is like, I can listen to him on our week, but he also helps me to go to sleep. So that that's that's the thing I do. But every now and again, I'll come on to a chapter that is just really, really interesting. And instead of going to sleep, I'll lie there and listen to it. So that can also keep me awake at 3am, even though it's supposed to do the opposite. Um, number four, um, Injustice. <laughs> How extra is that to be like, injustice keeps me awake at 3am? I'm not Batman. Um, I mean, I mean, I could be. I'm not Batman. Um, basically, I have this like weird sense of justice. Like, I feel like there should be order and justice and righteousness in the world. And there isn't. And it still bothers me every time I realise that there isn't. Because there's still, even though I understand there is, that life is chaos and there is no, there is no inherent sense of justice, there is no real right and wrong other than what we ascribe it to be and even then we fall short of that um, and that, that upsets me quite a bit because that's kind of not how I've believed things my whole life, you know, oh I was, I've been very much brought up on Disney ideals and you know, when you get older and realise that's not a thing, I just feel like I've kind of been lied to. Not by anyone in particular, just by the media, by, you know, the way that I've been socialised into life is that, you know, bad things don't happen to good people and when they do, it's unjust and there is some sort of sense of balance and nuance about the world and there just isn't. And when you learn that there isn't, it's, it's difficult. So that sometimes keeps me awake thinking about those things either because I've thought about an event or I've dreamt, dreamt about an event that's happened to me in the past and then I get angry about the injustice of it and the, the fact that I'm not able to do anything to change it or, or anything like that. Um, but sometimes just because, you know, it's come up in a dream that something's happened and it's been unfair but I've been un unable to fix it. So that's another one. Um, number three, what I would do if I was burgled. Um, I've never been burgled before, um, but when we moved in here, the people that lived here said that they they had had an attempted burglary in the past, but they'd lived here for like something about like 10 years and it had happened once. And this is a pretty quiet area, so I don't see it as being a massive risk. But I lie there and wonder like if, if I get burgled, like would I wake my husband up? Like would I scream? Would I ring the police immediately would I like run at them and shout something like how do you like if someone's like trying to break into your window like how do you deal with that do you, do you go over and say something do you, do you try and get away from me I don't know I don't know the answer and that keeps me awake at night uh, number two is very definitely mice mice have kept me awake at that time in the morning um if you don't believe me go and check out the video in the description of what traumatized me at 4am um Okay, maybe not 3am, but you know, it's, it's more of a general gist than anything. Uh, but yeah, mice have kept me awake at that time, and mice still do keep me awake at that time. Um, and that kind of leads me on to number one. Like, it was so traumatic that it makes slot two and slot one as well. The top things that keep me awake is since we've had mice, any noise ever. Um, so if I wake up in the night and I hear like a little squeak, and it's like my husband putting his foot on the footboard then I think we've got mice. If I wake up and there is like it's raining outside like when it rains outside I can hear this like pitter patter on the windowsill outside our bedroom and I think that's mice or you know the house settles and the, the, the door clicks or the floorboard creaks or something like that that's mice so it isn't 
really nice probably because you know I'm, I'm dealing with it and I'm finding less and less evidence of them being around so you know I, I block my doors as well before I go to sleep I check for mice and I block the doors so that they can't get in the bedroom to specifically to avoid the, the incident that happened in the video in the description but yeah ever since like mice has been the one thing like it's not strictly them keeping me awake it's more the idea of them keeping me awake um to the point where i can lie there and just like all of the sounds you just do my head in and i keep thinking it's mice and then i have to put my sleepy ears on and just hope it works so those are some things that keep me awake at three o'clock in the morning i hope yours are not as bad or that you at least don't end up lying there awake at three o'clock in the morning thinking about injustice I mean I won't wish that on anyone um, but yeah let me know in the comments what keeps you awake <laughs> see you later